Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. The next Hearthstone rotation is rapidly approaching. We don't have the date yet, but we do know that next Tuesday, March 15th, there's going to be a reveal stream about the next expansion. And when the next expansion comes, standard rotation will happen as well. And in the standard rotation, the expansions from 2020 are going to rotate out of standard format. So that means Ashes of Outland, Skullman's Academy and Madness at the Dark Moon Fair. I've already made videos reminiscing about Ashes of Outland and about Skolomans Academy. And in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about Madness at the Dark Moon Fair, what it gave for Hearthstone, what was the good, the bad and the ugly about this expansion that has only limited number of days left in the standard format. First of all, Madness at the Dark Moon Fair was the first expansion that came with a mini set. So this was a bigger expansion than the others at 170 cards instead of 135. Also, the power level of Madness at the Dark Moon Fair was quite high, so Ashes of Outland was the weakest of the 2020 expansions, and then Skolomans Academy and Madness at the Dark Moon Fair are competing for the top spot. I'd still rate Skolomans Academy as the most influential expansion of the year, but Madness at the Dark Moon Fair definitely contributed a lot, especially for some of the classes. 2020 was the first year for Demon Hunter in Hearthstone, and accordingly Demon Hunter received more cards than any of the other classes, so there's a whole bunch of these Demon Hunter cards around. And some of these are pretty good, like cards like Illidary Studies. I actually really wish that they would cause it the Illidary Studies, because that's such an iconic card. Discovering Outcast card uses the Discover mechanic, uses the Demon Hunter's very own Outcast mechanic. Just a wonderful card overall. But there's a lot more where that came from. Obviously, the Ilgenot Demon Hunter, the OTK Demon Hunter, made good use of Fell Screen Blast, which is now going away, as is Ilgenot. There are so many of these Demon Hunter cards that I can't show them all in a single page, but Ilgenot, indeed. Ilgenot OTK Demon Hunter, that's going to go away, and yeah, that was, that was truly an experience, and I guess I'm kind of fine with that going away. It wasn't, wasn't terribly fun, although it wasn't totally overpowered as an OTK deck either, so I suppose from a balanced sense it was quite alright, especially after some Ilginot nerves. Other than that, the biggest hits for the current Demon Hunter archetypes are Death Rattle Demon Hunter is using Renowned Performer, and Renowned Performer has been extraordinarily good in that deck, just a phenomenal card overall. But it is still keeping the main synergy cards because those are from Forged in the Barrens. Also, Kurtz's Demon Render is going to become a little bit weaker after rotation because expendable performers, that's on its way out. And that's not everything. Belfire Deadeye, that's also on its way out. So you can't have zero cost hero power scourgers anymore, even if you have existing minions on the board, you just can't push nearly as much damage as you used to be able to. We'll see how that affects overall Kurtz's Demon Render performance. Hopefully knocking it down a notch, because right now Kurtz's Demon Render is like, it's the best card in every Demon Hunter deck. It's the best card to give it the mulligan, it's the best card to draw during the game, it's just the best card. So maybe it will be slightly less overpowered after this. Another notable Demon Hunter success during Madness at the Dark Moon Fair was this attack power, this weapon Demon Hunter hitting you in the face. Stuff like Relentless Pursuit turned out to be pretty strong, as is Bladed Lady. Turns out whenever you can cheat mana, costs one if your hero has six or more attack, yeah, that is pretty good. At one point this archetype also made use of Stilt Stepper, draw a card if you play this turn, give your hero plus four attack this turn, but that just doesn't seem to be happening anymore. Maybe like using 3 mana and then having to draw a card and also play that. Maybe just too much mana for the current meta. Whereas while the individual outcast cards have been rather successful, the outcast demon hunter as an archetype really failed miserably. This line hopper redeemed pariah kind of stuff. Make your outcast cards cheaper, getting buffs when you play outcast cards. That, that just didn't work at all. Yeah, at, at no point really. But Demon Hunter is losing quite a lot with Madness at the Dark Moon Fair, because that OTK Ilgenot Demon Hunter is going away, and also those support cards for the Curtis Demon Render OTK are going away. Yet, if you're looking for the class that is losing the most with Madness at the Dark Moon Fair, just look at this Druid set. Druid gained so much with Madness at the Dark Moon Fair, it's, it's truly mind-boggling, like half of these cards are practically in every Druid deck. But of course, if you look back to the times of Madness at the Dark Moon Fair, the big thing in the Madness at the Dark Moon Fair expansion was the corrupt cards. Here we have Moon the Stamulet, give your hero plus four attack this turn, corrupt and gain six armor. 
but that's not the thing that Druid was known for when it comes to corrupt cards. What Druid was known for, obviously, was the carnival clowns. Corrupting clowns, survival of the fittest, getting more clowns with Yashiraj, it's just... It's an archetype that still sees occasional play, even though it's not that great anymore, but it was dominant for a period of time, and all of that is going away. Moon's Temulet is going away, Survival of the Fides is going away from the other expansions, and then Carnival Clown, Yashirash, they are going away from this expansion as neutral cards. Druid is also now losing access to Resizing Pouch, and Resizing Pouch wasn't really that big of a deal originally. When Resizing Pouch became a big deal was when Druid got Guff. So when Druid got Guff, then they reliably could go over 10 mana, then they could reliably cast Resizing Pouch and get some 10 mana cards, which include some of those old cards, for example, which include Trade Boss Onyxia, for example. And now Druid can no longer do that after the rotation. Also, like Guess the Way, Lunar Eclipses, and the Solar Eclipse Scenarian Ward. That's the main defensive combo of the current Ramp Druid. So I wonder, even though Druid is going to get to keep Kasakusan, which isn't even a Druid card, but it's going to like a Druid card, then how does Druid get there, and what else can Druid do? In the current meta, this Solar Eclipse Scenarian Ward is very important for survival of Druid. Also, aggressive Druid surges, Arbor Up is going away. And from Breeze Druid, Umbral Owl is going away. And those are also some major losses. Guidance is also a powerful card, but maybe more in Shaman than in Druid. For Hunter, Mads at the Dark Moon Fair was yet another rather mediocre expansion. Like, sure, there was this secret Hunter that they were trying to push, Mr. Winner's Petting Zeus, that never really became a thing. It just, just didn't work well enough. And then there was this Death Rattle idea, Maximum Blastenheimer, Dark Moon Tongue, Jewel of Nesot. That was actually better for the most part than the secret stuff, but still a niche deck of meta deck that didn't find mainstream success. The main Hunter cards that are seeing play, well, in Quest Hunter, Bola Shot is important. Anything that can deal damage is important for Quest Hunter, but surely Quest Hunter is going to get some damage cards in the new expansion so that they can remain playable. But the more mainstream ones for the Face Hunter, Ringling's Rifle, Trampling Rhino. Trampling Rhino has been kind of a definitive card, um, defining the way we think about Face Hunter for more than a year. Although recently there have also been like Drektar type of Face Hunter ideas, Furious Howl, no longer relying on Trampling Rhino. So at the moment when Trampling Rhino is rotating out, is also the moment when we already have tools that can replace it. And ironically, same also applies to Ringling's Rifle. Ringling's Rifle has seen so incredibly powerful, but 4 mana, current meta, yeah, it's a bit on the slow side. We're now seeing Bloodseeker, for example, being used in many of these more aggressive face hunter decks. And these two cards, at one point I would have thought that, okay, how is face hunter ever going to replace them? But right now it actually looks like face hunter is just fine even without them. And the rest of the hunters just was not impressive at all. And actually, when you come to think about it, the mage set, looking at one, like what is the mage set trying to push? It's trying to push these elementals, you have Confection Cyclone, Firework Elemental, you have the Grand Finale. And yeah, there have been these sorts of budget and half meme decks that just try to play some elementals and get to Grand Finale, but that is, that's just weak. And then they're trying to push like Secret Mage. A secret to play Stone Ghost 1 with Game Master, the Occult Conjurer, Sage, Seer of Dark Moon, and that also didn't really fly. Secret Mage has been good in Wild, but in Standard, pretty much just no. So the main archetypes that they have been pushing for Mage in Madness of the Dark Moonfair, they just failed. They just didn't become anything. However, individual pieces, Conjurer Mana Biscuit. Yeah, Mosaki OTKs. Then Deck of Lunasi. Well, Deck of Lunasi. Ooh. It was it was some of the worst times I've had playing Hearthstone. I have been playing against Deck of Lunasi Mages. And yeah, just changing that deck and then so oof. I I d I don't have words to describe the feeling of playing against Deck of Lunasi. Luckily it's not strong enough to be played anymore, and it's also going away, so Life is good in that regard. Then one card that I'm really going to miss for Mage is the Mask of Cthulhu. 
Seven mana deal 10 damage randomly split among all enemies. Shadow spell. The only shadow spell currently available for mage in standard. And the mage hero card recasts one spell from each spell goal that you have played. So no mask of Cthulhu, no shadow spells unless mage gets a new shadow spell in the new expansion or the new corset. Then that mask of Cthulhu is going to be sorely missed. I really hope that they print some kind of shadow spell for mage to replace that because Otherwise, the mage hero card is just going to be that much weaker. On the other hand, like, if their plan is to make those hero cards bad, then yeah, taking away Curtis Demon Renders OTK combo, taking away Shadow Spell from Dawn Grasp, that's one way to balance the hero card so that other cards can see play. Maybe. For some classes, Mad Set the Dark Moon Fair gives, like for Demon Hunter, for Druid, that Druid set was so incredibly strong. And for some classes, it just kind of doesn't, like for Paladin. Yeah, so support for Paladin, we have this token support with Lotraxion, with Carnival Barker, Balloon Merchant, that never worked in any way, in any shape, it was just totally unplayable. We have the little flashback to Dormancy with Imprisoned Celestial, totally unplayable. But there were some cards that were playable though, like Liberum of Judgment found a place in Liberum Paladin. Hammer of the Naru, was used in quite a few Paladin decks, actually. Very flexible card, just a little bit too weak right now for the current meta. And then there's Barricade, a little bit of big Paladin support. All right, but big Paladin, of course, off meta deck, very niche. You could say that it doesn't work either, although Barricade was not doing terribly in that archetype in many of its iterations. The strongest Paladin card from this set actually turned out to be, oh my, Yogg. Oh my Yog is such a definitive experience of yeah, randomness in Hearthstone, where you just try to cast a spell and something happens, and sometimes it's something terrible, sometimes you actually win the game because Oh my Yog turns your spell into something even better, and you just can never know. Most of the time it turns it into waste, and yeah, just very I would say borderline oppressive secret, because it's almost like a better counter spell except that it only costs one mana, so yeah, but it's going away, Whew, that's that's good. The priest set is also interesting, like what they were trying to push, they were trying to push this corrupt priest with Dark Inquisitor Sanesh, but Sanesh was so bad for such a long time, because originally Sanesh only reduced the cost of corrupt cards in your hand and deck, not cards that had already been corrupted, and now that it was buffed, okay, it became a little bit better, but the archetype remained completely unplayable anyway. So yeah, that didn't work out. Then Guhun the Blood God, Blood of Guhun, that stuff never worked out either. So the archetypes that were being pushed with this expansion, they just failed miserably. But the expansion did give Priest three extremely strong cards. Nasmani Bloodweaver, the essence of current Miracle Priest. You just play your Nasmani, you make a copy of it, you maybe make another copy of it, you play your entire hand, then you play your Maligos for zero, then you play your another entire hand, and yeah, these Nasmanis cause some very painful and traumatic experiences while playing Hearthstone, so I'm very, very happy that it's leaving. And then there's Palm Reading, discover a spell, reduce the cost of spells in your hand by one. Super strong card, especially in combination with Nasmani. So first you discount the stuff in your hand a little bit, so that in your Nasmani turn you can do even more stuff. And also discover a spell, of course, so you can find all sorts of answers. And Hysteria. Choose an enemy minion, it attacks random minions until it dies. Super powerful removal tool. Something that you have had to play around in standard form when playing against a priest for more than a year. Every priest always seems to have it. If you put your minions in combination where one of them can kill off all the others and then die, then yeah, that's going to be very, very bad for you. So, priest, the archetypes that were pushed, they didn't work. But some of the individual cards turned out to be very, very strong in other archetypes that were maybe not so much supported by this expansion. As for the rogue set from Madness at the Dark Moon Fair, Cloak of Shadows is going away, yes. That that card just enabled Poison Rogue to do such crazy things. Crazy things like they just hit you in the face and then they cloak and you can't do anything and they hit you and they cloak and you can't do anything and then they play their hero card and 
yeah, there were some very, very painful moments trying to do anything against Poison Rogue with Cloak of Shadows in the game. But now that one is going away. That's my first thought about <laughs> the rogue cards from this expansion. Although there are many staple rogue cards here. There's stuff like Price Plunderer, Oxyfraud, Swindle. Rather well-balanced cards, I would say, overall. Interesting. They allow for a lot of tempo play, just like Rogue is the tempo deck in Hearthstone. It can do just tough and play lots of cards, and these are the epitome of doing that sort of plays without being oppressive. So very fun cards, which I'm kind of sad are leaving standard format. But overall, Man at the Dark Moon Fair Rogue was a little bit directionless. These cards just don't seem to form any kind of coherent whole, and like Ticketmaster, Spark Joy Cheat, that Hekara, Malevolent Strike, Sweet Dude, this stuff just didn't turn out to be very useful at all. But Mantis the Dark Moon Fair did give Rogue some staples, some excellent tempo cards that every Rogue deck is going to miss, and then that very painful Cloak of Shadows, which I'm so happy is gone. The past year has been a very good time to cosplay Troll and wield Doomhammer and smack people in the face with that, but now Shaman is losing most of that support structure around Doomhammer. Cageman's Custodian, which draws your Doomhammer, gone. Stormstrike, which kills a Taunt Minion, and empowers your Doomhammer, gone. In our Storm Crash, well, with more attack as well, gone. Maybe even Doomhammer is going to be gone. We don't have the Corset announcement for next year yet, and Doomhammer is a Corset card at the moment, so we don't even know if that's still going to be around. But Shaman will have to figure out another path to aggression. Also, Quest Shaman is going to dearly miss Guidance. Look at two spells, add one to your hand, or Overload one to get both. Just play an Overload card, get two more cards, more resources. Just a fantastic resource, that one. And of course, the Bolner OTK Shaman is going to be gone, because like there's no Yashuras anymore, and there's no Dunk Tank anymore. The whole win condition is going to crumble, the combo is dead. And one card that I'm really going to miss which I don't think I ever played with, actually, is the Grand Totem Azor. At the end of your turn, give plus one plus one to all other totems in your hand, deck, and battlefield. What a fun idea, trying to make Totem Shaman something, but it just didn't have any proper support, and it kind of died. Yeah, well, that sort of stuff for Shaman. For Warlock, Madness at the Dark Moon Fair introduced one of the most controversial <laughs> decks, which is the Tikatus Warlock. You had Yashuras, so you could get another copy of Tikatus. Tikatus Corrupt removed the top five cards from your opponent's deck. Yeah, destroy their deck, have Cascading Disasters to destroy their minions, have Yashuras to generate more Cascading Disasters to generate more Tikatuses. That was a very, very painful deck to play against if you were playing a slow deck. And now it will be gone and that's going to be good. Although it was unplayable for many months because United in Stormwind killed any deck that was as slow as Tigatus Warlock. So it hasn't been playable for the past two expansions anyway. But before that it was pretty annoying at times. Madness the Dark Moonfair also tried to promote this sort of Demon Zoo idea. Midway Maniac, Fire Breather, Ring Matron, Manari Mosher. That just... It didn't really work. There were some Demon Zoo decks every now and then. I built a few, but overall it was still lacking a little bit. And what else do we have for Warlock for this expansion? Well, Hysteria, of course. Splendid removal tool for both Warlock and for Priest. And Deck of Chaos, wrapped the cost and attack of all minions in your deck. It was even buffed at one point. It was obviously a meme card at the start. It remained a meme card to the very end. It was just never playable. Envoy Rustwix, also a little bit meme, but probably my favorite. They still haven't fixed the bug with Envoy Rustwix, not working with Tamsin's Phylactery, which actually wasn't even an original bug in Fractured in Alterac Valley. It was introduced in a patch. But then that broke the interaction, and now you can't even do fun handlock and or Rustwix phylactery things right at the end of the expansion. Sad times. And with Rustwix anyway, those Prime Legendary minions, that was such a fun card. And it was even semi-playable in many of the meta games. Never really mainstream, definitely niche of meta, but I had pretty good results with that one. The strongest card, however, from this expansion, standing the test of time, is Backfire. For Warlock, that is. Draw three cards, deal three damage to your hero. 
boom just draw 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 that's such a good thing for warlock considering the current meta backfire is actually the only major loss for warlock here like Tigatus had its day envoy has been fun but never mainstream the demon zoo stuff just wasn't realized at any point so yeah backfire going away from warlock like many of the other classes, the Warriors it's also a little bit weird. We have stuff like Stagehand and Ironclad, cards that are like totally, totally useless. But this Warrior set gave rise to Rush Warrior, Bumpaka, ETC God of Metal, Ten Thrasher, Ringmaster Watley, just excellent, excellent cards for that. Rush Warrior archetype also dead nowadays, so none of these are actually seeing any play at the moment. Ringmaster Watley has to be the most fun card I have had. For warrior from this expansion, draw mech, dragon and pirate. And warrior's card draw is a little sketchy, so there have been so many times when I have been trying to figure out, okay, how do I actually put mechs, dragons and pirates into my deck? Or even two copies of at least two of those tribes, so that I can draw with Vatli and have that be used. So it's been a fun card, I've really enjoyed building decks with Vatli. Hasn't seen mainstream play lately, it was mainstream at one point, but still a fun card. However, there are other big losses for Warrior that are actually big still in the current meta, stuff like Minefield, because Minefield is such a tremendously good removal piece. Two mana, deal five damage random split among all minions. You're not going to have any minions at that point when you're playing a control deck. Just great. Always just deals the right amount of damage to all targets, can clear whiteboards, can clear individual bigger targets, just totally phenomenal. And then there's Sword Eater. Like, Quest Warrior isn't doing that well right now, but I don't know, if there's even less pirate support, it's going to become totally unplayable. I guess it's kind of unplayable already, but Sword Eater has been one of the better pirates. With the Taunt, with that Sword, Sword also giving you synergies with the Defias card, which shoots when you attack with a weapon. So, I wonder if they're going to print any new pirate support just to give Quest Warrior more of a go. But on the other hand, I think they want to bury Quest Warrior because of how oppressive it has been at times. So it's probably just a goner. And gone is the Rush Warrior, but it wasn't even played right now. So while some classes are still playing like the majority of their set from Madness the Dark Moon Fair, Many of the classes, the Mantis the Dark Moon Fair cards have actually just been power crept and they are no longer relevant. In the neutral part of the set, there are a couple of pretty interesting cards. There's of course Armor Vendor, 1 mana 1 tree, Belakar give 4 armor to each hero. Phenomenal defensive tool, one of the best defensive one drops of all time. Really, truly a lovely card. Then there's of course Crab Rider Rush, Battle Cry gain Wind Fury this turn only. It used to be Rush and Wind Fury. And there was a moment when Crab Rider was just used so much. It was Crab Riders everywhere, and it was getting buffed, and it was hitting face with Wind Fury all the time. And life was, I don't know if life was good, but life was definitely fishy. And now Crab Rider going away. It was already nerfed, so it's not really important in any way. Anyway, but yeah, now officially completely out of standard format. Another card that is relevant though is Wriggling Horror, 2 mana 2, 1 battle cry, give adjacent minions plus 1 plus 1, one of the best aggressive early game buff cards, just a very very good tool. And funnily enough right next to it there's Showstopper, 2 mana 3, 2 death rattle, silence all minions. A card that I thought was going to be totally useless when it was revealed, a card that was totally useless for a very 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 long time, until all of a sudden it actually saw a bunch of mainstream play during Fractured in Alterac Valley because of all of those board white freezes. Just shaman freezing everything was so annoying that you had to showstopper, kill your own showstopper so that your big minions can actually go face and just not sit there idle. That's maybe the only case that I can think of where a card that has been useless for almost its entire duration in the standard format just actually becomes good in its very last moments. Well, it was good until the miniset. Then the miniset came and then there was Kasagusan and nothing else and yeah, all kind of everything kind of went to went downhill from there. Happens. There's not too much going on with the mid cost neutrals. I mean there is Gaia Worm, splendid card for elemental decks, Spellcry played an elemental last turn, deal three damage. There's Circus Medic, part of that Walner OTK Shaman combo, but the whole combo is going away, so it's going away of course. 
knife vendor at one point that was actually good enough to be used as a finisher in Face Hunter. Pouring a 3 4 that deals 4 damage to each hero just doesn't cut it nowadays. And then there's Moonfang, can only take 1 damage at a time. So even playing Face Hunter for a brief period of time where you would just draw a buffed up Moonfang and then Moonfang would get on the board, the opponent couldn't remove it and it would be even more useful than the Rhinos. Other than those, these didn't see too much play. There was of course those Evolve Shamans with derailed coasters. Summoning 1-1 one -one Riders with Rush, that was, that was something but very niche use for the coaster. The expensive end of the neutral set in Madness at the Dark Moon Fair, however, was quite powerful and widely used. Silas Dark Moon, Battlecry, choose a direction to rotate all minions. Used in the famous Silas OTK Warrior, we would give a soulbound ash tongue to your opponent and then shield slam it and boom, all the damage would be directed at the opponent's face. Fun for a time, completely obsolete at this point. Strongman, still used in some ramp decks, together with Yashura's the Defiler, these corrupt cards, Cannibal Clown, key card in Clown Druid, wasn't really usable in anything else. I did try it in like Corrupt Priest, but it just didn't really work there. Then the reprints of the old cards. Nesot, card of the deep, Belkra reserved the friendly minion of each minion type. Nesot actually saw play it, there were like moments where Nesot was completely out of the meta, then there were moments like people were playing stuff like Nesot Paladin, there have been Nesot Priests, there have been a whole variety of Nesot decks. I thought Nesot was quite a fun card. Kutun the Shattered, breaking the pieces, battle cry deal 30 damage random split among all enemies. Once upon a time you could play this kind of very slow win condition that doesn't even win if your opponent has a bunch of big minions on the board, but it was never truly mainstream. Yashuras saw a lot of play, of course, Bolner combos, Druid decks, plenty of uses for Yashuras. And then Yogg-Saron, Master of Fate. Battlecry, if you cast 10 spells this game, spin the wheel of Yogg-Saron. Mostly saw play in Druid, because Druid lacks hard removal, so then when all else fails, jam Yogg-Saron, and sometimes it just magically wins you the game, and sometimes it doesn't. And that's kind of the essence of Hearthstone, and... And that's what Madness at the Dark Moon Fair was all about. So that was Madness at the Dark Moon Fair, 170 cards. Bigger than any of the previous expansions, of course every expansion from 2021 has been as big as Madness at the Dark Moon Fair. The expansions from 2022 should also be as big, although we'll find out on the 15th, Tuesday next week probably. Because then there's an announcement about what's going to happen with Hearthstone this week. We don't know yet. I was really expecting the announcement this week, but it's only coming next week. Anyway, that's 2020 in the books. And there were some good times, there were some bad times, there were some ugly times. And next week we're going to hear more about what's going to happen to Hearthstone this year. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and check out my Twitch channel.